main event we just had an introduction just to uh, whet your appetite the importance of the subject hermeneutics and so now we're going to learn the principles of interpretation now when you hear the word hermeneutics do you know that there's a name embedded in that word hermeneutics do you know the name of a person embedded in that word hermeneutics I don't know if you've heard this guy, Hermann Jutik. Hermann Jutik is a German existentialist philosopher who argued that a literary symbol is nothing by itself but comes into authentic being when it has been translated and comprehended. Now, if you wrote his name, you're wasting your ink because I just invented the name. <laughs> There's no such person by the name of Hermann Jutik. I think you already write the first time from the word hermeneutics, we have this Greek god. His name is Hermes, or more popularly known as Mercury. All right. So see, Mercury or Hermes is a Greek god of speech and trouble. He was the spokesman and interpreter for the gods. He would bring to a human level of understanding the message of the gods to human beings. So siya bali yung interpreter from the language of the gods to the language of human beings. So the Greek word herminuo came to refer to bringing someone to an understanding of something in his own language. Remember when the Lord Jesus Christ, after the resurrection, he was on his way to Emmaus, and remember he was talking to two disciples. Here's what it says in Luke chapter 24, verse 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained. Now the root word there is herminuo. He explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So, pwede mong palitan yan, he interpreted to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So, that's the word herminuo. That's where we got the word hermeneutics. And it came to refer to, to bring someone to an understanding of something in his own language. So, here's our working definition. Hermeneutics, they say that's the way it should be pronounced. Hermeneutics is the science and art of interpreting the Bible. Okay, write down the word science and art. Two blanks in your notes. Hermeneutics is the science and art. Now, there's a difference between science and art. As a science, it articulates principles and investigates the laws of thought and language. So you need to have the basic knowledge of grammar, you know, because that's part of the science, understanding a, uh, a statement. We need to understand grammar. But then as an art, it reveals the different shades of meaning depending on the context. So the art form, you know, one thing can mean scientifically, but in terms of art, it can have a different shade of meaning depending on the context. Let me illustrate this in this way. This statement, I love you. May sinabihan na ba kayo niyan? Have you heard those words before? I love you. Ano ibig sabihin yan? If you say, I love you, what does that mean? I love you. Sa Cebuano, gihigugma ko ikaw. Sa Tagalog, mahal kita. Yo te amo. Sa Spanish. Now, as a science, you understand I love you grammatically and literarily. I love you is what you say to someone you cherish. I'm sorry. Is what you say to someone you cherish and with whom you are affectionately intertwined. All right? I love you is what you say to someone you cherish and with whom you are affectionately intertwined. But then as an art, I love you, you need to understand correctly the implications or the different shades of meaning. So I love you can have different shades of meaning. For example, depending on the situation or the context. Kung yung nagsabi ng I love you, is a teenage boy, a 13-year-old boy, to his 13-year-old girlfriend. Anong klaseng I love you yan? We call that puppy love. Okay, puppy love lang yan. But you know what? As a science, it's what you say to someone you cherish and with whom you are affectionately intertwined. I love you. Now, tell me, 
Will the meaning, the shade of meaning change if the one saying I love you is a mother to a child? Definitely. As a science, it's still the same. It's what you say to someone you cherish and with whom you are affectionately intertwined. But as an art, the context has changed. There's no more romantic attachment to it. This is now what you call familial love. All right? This is now what you call instinctive love. It's a love that you don't have to learn. You mga mothers, the moment the baby comes out, kahit pangit yung baby, sasabihin ng mother, ang cute ng baby ko. <laughs> Di ba? Kahit pangit. Kasi instinctive yan eh. Kaya nga may kasabihan, the face that only a mother could love. <laughs> ba? Pag ganyan ang description sa kapatid, sobrang pangit mo. <laughs> the face that only a mother could love. So, as a science, it's the same, but as an art, it changes. Now, how about if the one saying, I love you, is a husband to a wife of 50 years? Kapatid, hindi na papi love yan. Yan daw ay asong ulul. No, 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 huwag naman. Huwag naman, sobra naman. <laughs> huwag naman. Ibig sabihin talagang totohanan na talaga yan. Wow, 50 years. You know, seeing the same face every morning. You know, talagang love na talaga yan. Now, as a science, it's the same. As an art, it changes the shade of meaning depending on the context. How about if the one saying, I love you, is a man? I love this car. You know, it's a materialistic kind of love. Friends, that's what happens in the Bible. We need to learn the science, but then we need to find out the context because the context will change the shade of meaning. That's the art. All right. So, therefore, hermeneutics provides us with a strategy that will enable us to understand what an author intended to communicate. No blanks there in your notes. It's just there printed. So here's the second word we need to define and then differentiate later on. Exegesis is the determination of the meaning of the biblical text in its historical and literary context. And so exegesis now is the determination of the meaning of the biblical text. So kung yung hermeneutics set up principles, when you apply these principles to the Bible, it's now called exegesis na. All right. So if hermeneutics consists of the principles by which the meaning is determined, exegesis is the actual interpretation of the text. Okay, no blanks there in your notes. It's all there. Now, the third word we need to define and differentiate is exposition. So your exposition now is the communication of the meaning of the text with its relevance to present-day hearers. So ano nga yung difference nito? Hermeneutics, set of principles. When you apply these principles to the Bible, you're now doing exegesis. Once you dig up the meaning from the Bible and then you begin to share it on Sunday morning, you're now doing exposition. Okay. So there are two types of exposition. One is homiletics. This is the science and art by which the meaning and relevance of the biblical text are communicated in a preaching situation. So yung uh, exposition, pwedeng preaching, but then also it can be in a teaching situation or pedagogy. Pedagogy, again, the context here is teaching situation. So behind the pulpit, bukas ng uma, ano, on Sunday morning, that's uh, homiletics. Sa Sunday school room, that's pedagogy. Okay. Now, if we want to differentiate all three, if you want to use all letter T's, you can say theories and hermeneutics. The actual task is exegesis, and then the transmission is exposition. If you want all letter P's, then you can use principles for hermeneutics. The actual practice of interpretation is exegesis, and then the preaching is exposition. But then the layman's language, down to earth, will say hermeneutics is the recipe. Yan. Mas madaling tandaan. Recipe. Yan ang hermeneutics. Now tell me, do you know of somebody who became healthy by memorizing recipes? Do you become healthy by memorizing recipes? No. No one becomes healthy by just memorizing. You need to mix the ingredients and then actually bake or cook it. So exegesis is the actual baking. Yung actual baking is the exegesis. And then once it's cooked 
and then you slice in bite-sized slices on Sunday morning, that is now the actual serving on Sunday morning, yan na po ang ating exposition. Homiletics kung preaching, kung Sunday school pedagogy inside the classroom, teaching context. So may recipe, may actual baking, and then the serving. Okay, let's look at this from a flow chart. From the top, we're now on page uh, 11. From the top is hermeneutics. Write down the word hermeneutics. That's where we all start. We need to find out first the recipe. All right? Hermeneutics is the principles for comprehending the content. Once we understand the principles, then we apply it to the Bible. That is called exegesis. Write down the word exegesis. So, kailangan hermeneutics and then exegesis. Once we unearth the meaning of the passage and we begin to teach it on Sunday morning, Niyan na po ang exposition. Two types of exposition behind the pulpit is homiletics. Inside the classroom is pedagogy. The ultimate desire is edification. To edify means to build up. Okay? To edify means to build up. Okay? Just uh, so that you'll have a mental picture here. That's the flow. Alright? Yan yung process that we need to uh, have. So, ngayon, today, we're understanding hermeneutics, yan po ang ating recipe. Tomorrow, we'll be understanding exegesis, yan po yung actual baking. And then, Lord willing, next year, level 3, we'll go into exposition. The actual preaching, the preparation of the sermon. Alright? And how to preach expository sermons. Yan po yung goal natin dito. So that's the recipe, the baking, and then the serving. Now tell me, what will happen if the recipe is wrong? What will happen if the recipe is wrong? Wrong ang uh, mixtures, wrong ang ingredients, you know. You'll have a problem sa baking. And then pag pinakain mo, what will happen pag pinakain mo? You will have diarrhea. And that's what we fear, yung theological diarrhea. You know the problem with theological diarrhea is people move fast when they have diarrhea, isn't it? You know, there was this job, they wanted somebody who's efficient, somebody who's effective, and so they tried to interview four applicants. They need to find out who's effective, who's efficient. So the first applicant was an American, Tinanong siya, what's the fastest thing that you can do? The American said, the fastest thing? Think. You know, the moment I think of a thought, it's there. It's fast. Very good. Sit down. Okay. The next applicant was a German. The German was, what's the fastest thing that you can do? The German said, blink. You know, meron nga tayo kasabi, at the blink of an eye. Ba? That's fast. Okay, you may take your seat. The third applicant was a Chinese. What's the fastest thing that you can do? The Chinese said, switch. You know, the moment you flick the switch, the light, almost like at the speed of light, it turns on. Switch. That's the fastest thing I can do. That's very good. You sit down. The fourth applicant was a Filipino. <laughs> the Filipino was asked, what's the fastest thing that you can do? The Filipino said, diarrhea, sir. <laughs> diarrhea? How is that the fastest? Sir, I had diarrhea one time before I could think, before I could blink, before I could just lumabas na. <laughs> That's the fastest thing that you can do. And you know what, friends? Theological diarrhea. That's the most dangerous thing. Do you know sometimes people, after the pastor would preach, people are gone. Saan nagpunta yun? Theological diarrhea, kapatid. Nagkaroon ng theological diarrhea. Thank you.